Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung says he did not and had no motive to mislead his father into thinking that his house would be gazetted as a heritage property. This was one of the allegations made by Mr Lee's siblings in a family dispute over the house where their late father, Mr Lee Kuan Yew, lived. The allegations featured on socio-political site The Online Citizen and its Facebook page last year. Well, today was the second day of Mr Lee's defamation suit against Mr Terry Shi, the site's chief editor. Ariel Lim has more. Mr. Lee said that it was a political and not a legal issue on whether the house was gazetted as a heritage house. Even if the house was not gazetted, it was unacceptable that his family was seen to profit from its demolition and redevelopment. He added that his father saw it best for him to deal with the house after considering such political implications and after hearing that his brother, Mr. Lee Sien Yang, would like to take the house. When charged that the real reason why he wanted to gazette the house was to inherit his father's credibility, as his siblings had suggested, Mr Lee thought it rubbish and added that he had been in politics for over three decades and as Prime Minister for 16 years. He said that if he still depended on living in a particular house to exude magic aura and impress the population, then he and Singapore would be in a very sad state. Mr Lee also rebuffed repeated allegations that he called the shots in Cabinet. He said he didn't have the freedom of action. He couldn't override his minister's wishes to carry out his father's wishes. That would do ill to Singapore. Based on emails showing Mr Lee Kuan Yew's belief that the house was gazetted, Defence Council opposition politician Lim Tian said it must have been Mr Lee who told his father about it. This since it was discussed before and it couldn't have been the others. Calling it totally untrue, Mr Lee said there was no basis for this. If his father had told him of this, Mr Lee would have told him he was mistaken. Mr Shi took to the stand in the afternoon. He admitted to not checking on the truth of the allegations he was repeating, though he earlier said he published extensively on the matter before and didn't need additional effort to get in touch with required evidence. Plaintiff counsel said the sequence of offending statements followed the exact sequence in Mr Shi's instructions to his writer where he'd asked for creative writing. Mr Shi had disagreed that these statements were to be read chronologically. He said he clarified it after realising there was possible misinterpretation when he received a letter from the Prime Minister's office. Plaintiff counsel called this disingenuous, saying that it was an excuse after he was caught for lying.